Hello, everyone! Today we will be discussing two of the most frequently asked questions that we encounter as model developers. And I would even almost call them obligatory questions. Both of them get extremely emotionally charged responses from all parties involved, with typically both questions asked toward the end of the meeting. Let's start with question number one. What would happen if everyone started to use your trading strategy? I don't remember the first time when I was asked this question, but I do remember this question in one of the meetings that changed my destiny and brought me clearly to where I am today. At that time, I was meeting the lead investor of my first company, Strategy Runner. It was a fourth meeting of that day and probably one of at least 150 that I attended during that specific time period. To say the least, I was exhausted. And I was tremendously bothered by the lack of understanding shown and why the same smart investors were not running and jumping after such a great and clear opportunity for investment in the x Tecton computer science PhD team of developers with all the experience in the right top companies. The only plausible reason was that it was the year 2000 and the investment doors were literally closing on startup one after another in the post-internet bubble burst. So, on that day, at the fourth meeting, the guy that sat in front of me was a chess player, my cup of tea. The meeting room was decorated by jeans elegantly placed on the wall. We were at the Lee Cooper main offices. The guy listened very attentively and was clearly taken in by the idea and the team. Next to him sat a young guy, tech guy, long hair with a poor choice of t-shirt that only true geeks can wear. Irritatingly, he kept asking questions to the point where he tired me out and got on my nerves. He was ruining it for me. But then he asked the question, what would happen if everyone joins your system? Trading is a zero sum game. The market will crash, won't it? And I snapped back. Why do you ask this philosophical question? Perhaps it will be better to ask business-based ones. Some context for you all now. I was 26. I am not too proud of the person that I was back then. Poor meeting room manners. Back then, I had to be proud of myself for about 10 more minutes until we finished the meeting and I finally left the room. This was because the person who brought me in mentioned that the young guy was my investor. And for the other one that sat at the CEO table, he was Year's older brother, who had helped organize the entire process. Year who, I hear you wonder? The ICQ guy. Uh -oh. Now you're telling me? Apparently, the ICQ guy, being Gary Goldfinger and being only two years older than me, also liked the idea and eventually invested in the company. Now, as I explained, I was young and proud of myself to call the question philosophical. By doing so, I basically dismissed it on site, naming it irrelevant, which is far from the truth. For a beginner that has never experienced the full process of building a successful model and making money with it, such a question is similar to what will you do if you become the most loved and adored rock star in the world, where everyone will want to buy your record? What would you do with all the money and fame? Most would answer with, let's get there first, right? But I started to trade with my models. I've got to know many other developers and companies that had successful models of their own. Apparently, it was a very real and important question. It took a bit of a different spin. Instead of asking what will happen if everybody wants to join the model, the true question is, what will happen to the performance of your model if it manages 10,000 100,000, 1 million, 2 to 500 million, then billions. The different models have different performance curves. They depend on the market liquidity and the type of orders used, along with the frequency of trading, and of course, the win-loss ratio, trading commission, spread, slippage, and more. Obviously, I don't want to bore you with all the full detailed analysis, breakdown of every model, and their identifying factors. Instead, I want to explain you the logic behind them, and this logic is written in the simplest form being that. Every trade has a price, defined by the model for each buy inside signal to be executed. 
So if the model signals to buy at 100 and sell at 110, but when the system actually sends and executes the signal, instead they are filled at the prices 101 and 109, and instead of 10 points profit, you'll only get 8 points. While that may seem insignificant in this scenario, since your system still got some profit, the real and often ignored core issue is that when it comes to losing signals and positions, instead of dropping just one or two points, you actually suffer bigger losses every time. Have a look with me now at the following example. If we have five winning trades, 12 losing trades, our profit and loss formula for the system will be number of winning trades multiply profit for each trade minus losing trades multiply loss of each losing trade. So our model is expected to have 26 points. In reality, the system will lose money. It will lose eight points based on the fact that five winning trades will bring only eight points each and 12 losing trades will lose four points each. So to summarize with you and to simplify the lesson, anyone and everyone can manage $10,000 and make some money. But very few systems are able to manage hundreds of millions in trading systems without losing the performance or worse, the funds. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I do hope to see you back here next week for part two, as we delve deeper into questions of capacity. And our second question, if your system is so good, why would you share it with me and not trade only for yourself? Bye for now and see you next time. <laughs>